the greatest ideas have come from sitting on the toilet. Every day, some company, individual, or group is known for giving the public a load of bullshit. Come here to get your daily dose of shit by Alan Cousin. It's time you hear the shit everyone wants to know. Now to have your attention, welcome to your daily dose of shit with your host Alan Cousin, founder of Get Up Radio, Get Up Radio Media. Today is Tuesday, January 17, 2023. Yes, 17 days into the new year. And uh, it's quite interesting here in Texas because you know it's supposed to be winter time, but yet right now we're at uh, 72 degrees. Just doesn't feel right let me just tell you i like it not complaining but mm, something's a coming something's a coming anyway that's another topic so what are we going to talk about today well first of all i will say this i did not sleep very well last night and that was not um normal for me because normally i'm able to just you know go to sleep enjoy myself for about you know a good seven eight hours and then of course get ready for the next morning um, I will say though, I did take my COVID booster, my latest COVID booster this weekend, uh, I took it Friday around 5 p.m. thinking, okay, hey, you know, everybody else that I know took it about 12 hours, 24 hours later, they were okay. Yeah, that, that, that wasn't, a, that wasn't, yeah, it didn't happen for me. I took it and uh, it basically said, uh, yeah, you're going to be tired for a while. Yeah, you're not getting out of bed for a while. Yeah, your muscles are going to ache for a while. And then finally, I think that Saturday night trying to sleep, going into Sunday, I felt like as if I if I would have taken drugs, you know, like some heavy, heavy drugs. I'm talking like some, some heavy coke mixed with heroin, mixed with marijuana, mixed with lucid acid and everything maybe that might describe how I felt because I was waking up every hour on the hour pain in my gut pain in my chest my eyes felt like they were just being stung by bees not to mention I was hot as hell like I was burning up sweating then all of a sudden I would be cold as as if I was as if I was in Antarctica you know, it just was, it was miserable. It was just plain miserable. But, but like I say, I know I'm doing this for a good cause for myself because unlike many others out there, I am, I am anti-immunal. So, you know, when I get a cold, it it's not just a cold. Like a cold for you might last you maybe, what, two weeks. A cold for me might last me two to three months. So I have to really watch myself, take care of myself, and keep that body going, you know. So, anyway, it was an interesting weekend, but, <clears throat> like I said, that's not today's topic. That was just me just rattling off, and maybe I was like, well, maybe this, you know, me trying to take my dump today might have had some causes from that after effect, because uh, normally, you know, I go in my little porcelain toilet, you know, I get my little Android phone, I read the news, scour through, you know, skim through it, maybe look at a video or two, and boom, I'm good. And today I was kind of like, eh, not gonna, you know, not gonna do anything. And also when I wasn't ready, it was like, it's time to go, fellas. We're not waiting. Either you are ready or not, but we're coming. And I was like, oh my God, really? And of course I'm running to the toilet trying to get there just in time. And then of course I think I'm done. I walk back into the office. Next thing you know, not later than three minutes I'm going right back heading straight to the toilet again for number two so it was it was one of those speedy Gonzalez days today for me that was unexpected but you know I heard other people uh, I spoke to today was kind of weird for them too so I'm not the only one but my topic today just so you know and it's gonna be a brief topic so maybe that's probably why I'm kind of talking about other things are pets 
That's right, those lovable, kind, cuddly, furry things that we enjoy having around, right? Pets, dogs, hamsters, gerbils, mice, rats, um, fish. You know, we have so many forms of pets. And we love having them around. But I thought about it. I was like, you know, I don't mind having a pet. Too, so get me wrong. I had, you know, had Gizmo and... You know, rest in peace, he, he had unfortunately caught cancer and I had to let him go and let him down and I do miss Gusmo sometimes. I mean, there were times he would just look at me and I could just, it's like I could just read his mind and, you know, he could just read my mind and, you know, we just had that connection, you know, and I do miss him sometimes. So, you know, if you're listening to Gizmo, yes, I do miss you. I know sometimes you got on my nerves, but I still miss you, though. But... <clears throat> My thing is this. Have you ever really thought about when we have pets? You know, clearly we buy pets because we want something of ours, something to enjoy, something that, you know, someone that can be around that that will love us no matter what because, you know, basically they have that affection for us because they're always there whenever no one else is. I mean, so... You know, we, I guess we look for that companionship, so to speak. A companionship where you don't ever have to worry about waking up one day and they're like, I'm done with you. You know, because they're always there. And they're always around. And, and they're always willing to give you affection. Or it's like sometimes they kind of know when you need their attention. Or, you know, you're feeling gloomy or down and they decide to somehow cheer you up. I mean... They're pretty cool. <clears throat> but I will say one thing, though. Have you ever really thought about the situation of the pet? I mean, clearly the pet, you know, you bought a pet for yourself, right? You bought it to be there to entertain you, to be there around you, to utilize when necessary because, you know, you want to be alone or you want to have a friendship that never ends. But who's serving who? Like, really, who is serving who when it comes to you and your pet? Because think about it. Your pet has to be fed, right? So you have to buy, you know, cat food, dog food, gerbil food, rat food, whatever. Your pet needs a place to sleep, right? So you normally buy a bowl or if it's, a, you know, fish, there's water, of course, or salt water, fresh water. And then you have to make sure to keep the water clean and you have to, you know... If they're not a, you know, fish or a dog or a cat or something, you might know, be nice and buy them a, a bed to sleep on or to lay on. You know, otherwise you might be one of those that lets them sleep with you. It just depends because some do, some don't. And then, of course, you know, you got to feed them, you know, water every so often. So you got to get them a water bowl and or you can get them one of those feeders where they basically they can hit the button and it feeds. But the thing I'm really kind of stressing, I guess, is... It's interesting because you buy this pet, right? And you look at it like, you know, the pet's there for you, but are you serving the pet? You know, I think about it. Are you the one getting the full enjoyment out of them? Or are they the one getting the full enjoyment out of you? I mean, think about it. Who feeds who? Who takes care of who? Who bathes who? Who picks up, you know, from the litter box or picks up, you know, crap or pee pads, you know, depending on, you know, how you basically have them using the bathroom or who takes them out to use the restroom, you know, to use the bathroom, take a dump or take a leak, basically. I mean, I'm not going to say it's the best gig, but it's a pretty good gig to be a pet. If you get a good owner, that is. See, now that's the catch. You have to get a good owner. Because if you get a bad owner, well, then it's not as good as it can be. Because then you get an owner who doesn't give a shit about you. You know, then of course, you know, you may not get fed every day. You may not get clean water or good water. You may not get, you know, organic compound food. You know, you may not have someone who walks you around and exercises with you. Or want to be around you and play with you a lot. 
You may have someone that just basically abuses you, kicks you, takes out their stress on you. So that's the catch. If you get a bad owner, well, yeah, it's not a good deal. But if you get a good owner, I mean, hey, you get a good owner, you got a great deal. Because then you got good food, good water, exercise, nice temperature, nice area to live in. Get to travel with them sometimes, I'm sure. Stay in hotels with them sometimes. I mean, hell, there are even pet owners out there now. When they pass away, they leave stuff in the will to the pets. So they can still be taken care of. I mean, how, how do you like that? You know, they leave money to their pets so that they can be taken care of until they die themselves. So like I said, if you get a bad owner, eh, it's not the best thing. But if you get a good owner and you're a pet, you might have a sweet deal on your hands. I mean, because I mean, I, I can just imagine, oh, well, you know what? Bobby didn't really pay attention to me. Like I wanted Bobby to. I like Bobby. Bobby's fun. I like when Bobby throws the ball. I like when Bobby scratches me under my chin. I like when Bobby rubs me on my belly. But Bobby wasn't really being nice this weekend. Well, Bobby's not home yet. You know what? I'm going to take a big pile of shit right here in front of Bobby's door. I think maybe Bobby will get the word and will kind of understand that I'm upset. And we'll, you know, he'll, he'll realize that he needs to rub my belly more and scratch under my neck more and maybe give me some more treats and, and you know, take me out to play ball because Bobby wasn't wasn't a good good owner. And, you know, why should I be a good pet and go take a dump on the pad or wait until Bobby comes home because Bobby didn't take care of me so I'm not going to take care of Bobby so I guess I'm just going to go ahead and take this dump right here I mean you ever think about that like you know why do they do that like why when they know they're supposed to not do these things like I've seen times where our cat will look at us no they're not supposed to do something we'll say stop don't you do it don't you do it and they'll look at us and they'll you gonna see they're taunting us like, what? Don't 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 do this. What? Uh, you, you you don't want me to, you don't want me to do this, and then they do it, and you're like, damn it. You know I said not to do it, and then I run away of course, and try to escape. And you know for the most part they get away until finally you catch them in and you either put them in a the cage or hit them on the head or whatever, and you know life is back to normal. But it's. It's just interesting to me how pets can, you know, as they say, supposedly can't understand us. But I'm sorry. My dogs and my cats understand me very well. And they know when daddy's angry, don't mess with daddy. But they know when daddy's happy, oh, go around daddy. And know when daddy's eating, sometimes daddy might be nice because he can't eat certain bread or whatever. He, and he doesn't want to throw it away. So he might give it to us for leftovers. Or, you know, daddy might be in a good mood and he might offer us a little bit of his leftovers because he's full. You know, they understand daddy. They understand daddy quite well. Plus, daddy's nice to him on their birthday. Daddy might buy them some caviar or some steak, you know, depending on whether it's a dog or a cat. You know, because daddy's like, hey, it's your birthday. It's a special day. So, like I said, if you have a good owner, hell, you might have a great life. I mean, let's think about it. You don't have to go to work 9 to 5 for 8 hours. All you got to do is just basically entertain your owner at times. At times. You know, do some things for them. Some time, maybe some tricks when they want you to. Other than that, you get to basically sleep for hours on a day. Eat and drink when you basically want to. Because if you're hungry, you just got to open your mouth and meow or bark enough. And they'll probably come out and give you what you want. And other than that, you're just relaxing. Relaxing in a nice, comfortable home with nice food, good, clean water, treats, and attention when you want it. Isn't that interesting? I mean, have you ever really thought about that? Like, really thought about how good of a deal these pets got? 
I mean, I wish I could be one of those people that just stay home, don't have to work, get to eat, get to drink, get to, you know, have treats, and get to basically be safe from all kinds of endangerments. And if I get sick, they take me to the doctor and make me better. I mean, there are even crematories now that will, you know, cream do a cremation for your pet so you can actually have their ashes and, you know, put them in a box and so forth. I mean, there are actually pet cemeteries out there as well where you can bury your pet. And now you can put your pet on your insurance and have pet coverage. I mean, the world has changed America. The world has changed drastically to the point where pets are not just animals. They're part of our lives. They're part of our family. Quite interesting how things have changed from 1600s to the 21st century, don't you think? And they have a pretty good deal. I mean, the only thing we can't do, we can't claim any of those expenses yet and write them off on our taxes. I mean, think about how much food you buy, water you buy. Sometimes you might buy clothes for your pet. Halloween, you know, Valentine's Day, Christmas. Or you might buy, you know, little toys for your pet. I mean, you start calculating the amount of money a owner really spends on their pet. It gets a, a little up there. You might be surprised. I mean, I know I myself, we spend an average amount. And I mean, we're taking them to the vet. You know, as far as the spending on the food, you know, making sure that they're taken care of, get them treats here and there. I'm probably thinking we spend a roughly around three to five thousand dollars a year, maybe six. I mean, now granted, we have two dogs and two cats, but still, you know, about, about five or six thousand dollars a year. Yeah, I would say that. That's just on your pets. Think about that. It's not on yourself, it's on your pets. Now, like I said, they're, they're great to have around. Sometimes, you know, I'm sad and they know I'm sad and they'll come and rub their head against me and or they'll lay on my lap depending because the dogs will lay on my lap. The cats will actually rub their head against me and meow or they'll look at me and just start purring. I mean, they understand what they're doing. They, they have their moments of glory, so to speak, to make you feel better, make you feel comfort. But I'm like, wow. Look at this gig you got. Look at this opportunity you got. Now, I will say one thing, though. When I am sleeping, the dogs don't do it, but the cats, when they think they're going to try to wake me up at 6 in the morning because they're hungry, they got another thing coming. Because guess what? It's not their house. It's my house. And I will let them know. It's my house. I'm going to get up and feed you when I get up. I'm not getting up and feed you because you think you're hungry. I will get up and feed you when I'm around, when I'm awake, and then you'll get your food then. And that's how I am. Now, my other half, she tends not to be that way all the time. She'll get up and do it. I'm like, no, 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 no. You can go and meow all you want. I'm going back to sleep. And when I wake up, you'll get what you want. Because those cats, I tell you, sometimes they can get a little snobby and a little picky. And sometimes they think they rule the world. And I mean, granted, I understand that Egyptians honored them. And, you know, Egyptians had cats mostly as pets because they felt like they were so intelligent and uh, they were the pets of the gods. But uh, pet of the god or not, you're not telling me when to get up in the morning to feed you. I'm sorry. That's not going to happen. Because unless you're dying, I'm not getting up. I'll take care of you when I wake up because I'm getting my sleep because I need my rest. Because guess what? I go to work, not you. I pay the bills, not you. And guess what? I make sure to get food for you. I get money to take care of you. So you're going to listen to me. And I tell them that. And they look at me and walk away. And I swear, you would think that they must understand me. Because as soon as I start complaining like that, they just, oh, nope, nope, nope. And they walk away. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I thought so. You better leave me alone. But like I said, it's just... One of those things I thought about today while I was on the toilet. You know, it's like, pets. I mean, gosh. 
unless you get a bad owner, you get a pretty good deal. Just saying. That's a pretty sweet deal. So, just think about that sometimes when you have your pet. You just have to wonder. I mean, yeah, they can't leave the house like you can. They can't go places like you can. But other than that, though, is it really a bad deal that they have? Or is it a pretty sweet deal? You think about it and you decide for yourself. Well, this is Alan Cousin from your Daily Dose of Shit podcast. And I guess until tomorrow, enjoy your day, stay safe, and always remember, idiots are everywhere. Thanks for listening to your Daily Dose of Shit talk show. If you have some insights, questions, or information of bullshit to pass on, please email us at momentousevents at AOL.com. Make sure to come back daily to hear some new shit about money, business, life, and who knows what else as I take a dump on the toilet.